Hey everybody, uh, this is my second time trying to make this video um, because I was kind of a dummy the first time and I'll tell you why <laughs> briefly. Um, this is a, what you're looking at is a Famiclone portable machine. So it plays Famicom games and most of them I suppose it emu it's an emu emulation machine, it's a clone. Um, but it's portable, so it's got its own screen and whatnot, so you can take the games with you and stuff. So I picked this up at Hard Off, I guess about a month and a half ago, uh, for about a thousand yen, which is twelve dollars, I guess, a little more than twelve dollars, something like that, U.S. Um, and it, you know, it came in the box with the instruction manual and all the all the stuff that came with it originally, and it's it's like new, so I was happy about that. Good price. So I'll just show you quickly. Um, it just says it's got a 2.4 inch LCD screen and it has a AV out for the TV which is a nice bonus and it out, it comes with the, the cords too which was cool. Um, the name of the machine apparently is the Game Cassette Computer Portable. Um, whoever was working in that marketing department yeah give them a raise. Um, I do like this though. Let's play a game. Everybody gets fun. <laughs> um, yeah, and then there's just some typical stuff on the back here. All the warnings. Don't play for too long. Use new batteries. Don't mix your batteries. If you plug it into the TV, uh, turn your TV off first. If you remove the cartridge, turn the game off first. Uh, my favorite though is this. Let me just see if I can get it a little closer or a little bit more focused. Yeah, this is the AC adapter port. And then it says here, Please don't use it. <laughs> I love that. And then it says it again um, down here somewhere. Oh, uh, if I can find it doesn't anyway. It says it twice. It says please don't use the AC adapter port. You know you could have just not put an AC adapter port in there if you don't want people to use it. And I haven't tried it to see if it works, but I don't know. I think it probably does. I have a few of these other Famiclones that are. Um, you know, not portable, and they have a sticker over it, but if you have the right right one, it totally works. So I guess it's just kind of, um, mm, I don't know, a fire hazard or something. I'm not really sure. But let me open it up and uh, show it to you here. Uh, okay, here we go. So yeah, here we go. Once again, uh, there. This is the AC adapter port, please don't use it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and of course there was not an AC adapter included with it. So here's the machine itself. As I said, it's like new. It's still got the plastic film over the screen. Nice. Uh, I don't think I opened it before I bought it. I can't remember. It came with batteries, which is cool. It also, as I said, it came with an AV adapter. It even came with a little strap. Uh, if I can pick it up, that would be good. Yeah, little strap, which... Where does that go? I wonder. Oh, here. Uh, yeah, there's a little place to put the strap here, so that's cute. Um, right, so there it is. Um, it looks okay, right? It's got extra buttons. You have the turbo if you want it, right? Because the Famicom only had two buttons, and then turbo is a nice feature for some games. Uh, start, select, reset. This is the volume control that makes it louder or quieter. The sound on this is not very good, uh, as you might imagine, and mine has a little bit of a wiring problem. I'm assuming it's just mine. The sound sometimes will just get quite gradually quieter, and then you have to keep turning it up as you're playing the game, which is pretty irritating. Um, I did plug it into the TV. It worked pretty well that way. Unfortunately, that this doesn't affect the sound for the TV, so that problem doesn't exist uh, when it's plugged into the TV. This is my least favorite kind of... Um, control pad because it's the kind where if you push it in the middle it goes down all the way right you can I move my thumb around nothing's happening right because it's all the way in that's not cool I don't like that it worked okay I tried a couple games a few minutes ago Super Mario Brothers 3 it wasn't a huge problem for me and I was doing okay on a on a shmup called um, Crisis Force which is one of my favorite games on this system if you hold your thumb like this I find it it's easier to work with this kind of a control pad but if you do it like that you know, it's it's just not very good. So, yeah, just quickly, this is the, uh, as I said, the AC adapter port, which you're not supposed to use. This is for the AV to the TV, if you decide to use that. 
This is for headphones, which were also weren't included, or earphones. Stereo, it's a stereo output, but uh, it's for the really small um, uh, plug ones. Here's the on-off switch. And if you look at the back, this is the great part about this, though, that I, when it takes four AAA batteries. You put the game here, so there's not like an actual slot, right, to put it in. I'll show you. Like, obviously, with all of these kind of things, you usually slide it in like that. It's almost the same size, by the way, as a cart. Um, pretty small. You don't slide it in like this. You watch this. You connect it. And not like this, because that's what I tried to do in the last video, and I couldn't figure out why it didn't work, because I was being dumb. It has a little has the little slants here, so you can see which way the cart's supposed to go in, although it will go in either way. Uh, you have to put it in this way, so that the label is actually facing inward okay uh... and then that's it you play it with that thing sticking out like that and <laughs> you're just like okay you know for like a sh i don't know for any game really if you're gonna play it for any period of time there's the concern that right this is gonna wiggle around too much and you're gonna lose your game right but uh... i have to admit when i was playing this earlier I didn't have a problem. I wiggled around as much as I could, and I just didn't have an issue with it at all. So, I don't know. I'll turn up the sound and see if it turns itself down or not. <laughs> um, apologize for the poor kind of picture, whatever. Okay, and yeah, like I said, if I'm concentrating on playing the game, it plays okay. I'm not going to really try to play this. Um... But, I mean, it's alright. It's cool that you can take it with you and plug it into a TV. But, um, so I'll just, you know, do that level again really quick and turn up a bit more. It's too much. Okay, and then if I w I'm really wiggling that thing around and nothing's happening, right? Here's the turbo. But I'm just, oh, there we go. We got it to freeze, right? So, I mean, I, I admit I tried basically to do that and I think it came out a bit, but... Anyway, I mean, that can happen if you really get into your game, right? So then, obviously, this game is lost. I'm on level 1, so it's not a big issue. But, you know, if I were playing uh, a role-playing game or something, I'd be really mad <laughs> if that happened. So, ma, it's something to be be careful about, anyway. Um, I guess that's all I wanted to say about this. I just think this might be the worst design for a, a portable video game machine, certainly, uh, ever. Because when you're playing portable video game machine, the whole point is you're moving around, yeah? So, I mean, if this had a, a port for a controller, that could almost redeem it a little bit. Because then you could just set this down and not be, you know, worried about the game getting screwed up. Because it's not getting moved around so much. But, uh, just quickly since I mentioned it, this is Crisis Force. One of the best shooters on the Famicom wasn't released in the US on the NES I think it's only Japan and uh, it's made by Konami actually you can see um, I'll just start it up really quick since I'm doing this just a quick bit of gameplay why not Let's see if I can get it to hold still so on this one A is fire and just B changes the type of the weight, I guess your weapon basically. And then if you push them both, it notches a little bomb like that, which kind of sends that spinning thing. And already you can see there's quite a bit of slowdown, which, as I recall, when you play it on an actual Famicom, it doesn't have this much slowdown. But I mean, when you consider the, the other shoot em ups of the time and all the stuff that's going on with this one, this is pretty amazing. Uh, that they did this on the same machine, um, the, which is why, like I said, this is easily one of the best shoot 'em ups on uh, the Famicom. It's a little pricey, but if you can if you can find it for, I don't know, twenty bucks or less I, for the cart, I would recommend picking it up if you're you know if it's in good condition and you're a fan of schmucks. Um, I found it as cheap. I don't know. I guess the cheapest I've ever seen is probably about. Fifteen dollars, maybe. It doesn't usually go very cheap, and I don't see a ton of copies, but it's not super rare either. Uh, and you can see the volumes. <laughs> I'm not really playing. I'm just trying to show you the game. Um, turning down again. So, uh, anyway, this machine's kind of a piece of crap. But again, for <laughs> for ten dollars, you know, whatever.
Uh, thanks for watching. Ten minutes. Time's up. Bye bye.